The Rendlesham Forest UFO incident occurred between the nights of December 26, 1980, and December 27, 1980 in the Rendlesham Forest, which is located in the county of Suffolk, England. The incident involved sightings of unexplained lights, an encounter with an unidentified object, and physical evidence, as well as numerous eyewitness accounts both collected by and provided by military personnel. The incident is quite controversial, especially the statements made by Staff Sergeant Jim Penniston, of the United States Air Force USAF 81st Security Police Squadron. Mr. Penniston claims to have touched an actual physical craft, and to have observed and copied sketches of strange hieroglyphic-like symbols which were located on the craft. Britain's Roswell UFO Lands Rendlesham Forest, Suffolk, England, Part 2 The first piece of primary evidence to be made available to the public was a memorandum written by the deputy base commander, Lieutenant Colonel Charles I Holt, to the Ministry of Defense AMOD. Known as the Holt Memo, this was made publicly available in the United States under the U.S. Freedom of Information Act in 1983. The memorandum was dated the 13th of January 1981, under the title, Unexplained Lights. The two-week delay between the incident and the report might account for errors in the dates and times given. The memo was not classified in any way. David Clark, a consultant to the National Archives, has investigated the background of this memo and the reaction to it at the MOD. His interviews with the personnel involved confirmed the cursory nature of the investigation made by the MOD and failed to find any evidence for any other reports on the incident made by the USAF or UK apart from the Holt memo. Holt has since gone on record as saying he believes that he witnessed an extraterrestrial event that was then covered up. A recording made by Lieutenant Colonel Charles Holt during his investigation. In 1984, a copy of what became known as the Holt tape was released to UFO researchers by Colonel Sam Morgan, who had by then succeeded Ted Conrad as Holt's superior. This tape chronicles Holt's investigation in the forest in real time, including taking radiation readings, the sighting of the flashing light between trees, and the star-like objects that hovered and twinkled. The tape has been transcribed by researcher Ian Rapath, who includes a link to an audio download and also a step-by-step -step analysis of the entire contents of the tape. In 1997, Scottish researcher James Easton obtained the original witness statements made by those involved in the first night sightings. One of the witnesses, Ed Cabensag, said in his statement, We figured the lights were coming from past the forest since nothing was visible when we passed through the woody forest. We would see a glowing near the beacon light, but as we got closer we found it to be a lit-up farmhouse. We got to a vantage point where we could determine that what we were chasing was only a beacon light off in the distance. Another participant, John Burroughs, also stated, we could see a beacon going around so we went towards it. We followed it for about 2 miles 3 kilometers before we could see it was coming from a lighthouse. Burroughs reported a noise like a woman was screaming and also that you could hear the farm animals making a lot of noises. Holt heard the same noises two nights later. Such noise could have been made by muntjac deer in the forest, which are known for their loud, shrill bark when alarmed. In June 2010, retired Colonel Charles Holt signed a notarized affidavit, in which he again summarized what had happened, then stated he believed the event to be extraterrestrial, and it had been covered up by both the UK and US. Contradictions between this affidavit and the facts as recorded at the time in Holt's memo and tape recording have been pointed out. In 2010, Base Commander Colonel Ted Conrad provided a statement about the incident to Clark. Conrad stated that we saw nothing that resembled Lieutenant Colonel Holt's descriptions either in the sky or on the ground, and that we had people in position to validate Holt's narrative, but none of them could. In an interview, Conrad criticized Holt for the claims in his affidavit, saying he should be ashamed and embarrassed by his allegation that his country and Britain both conspired to deceive their citizens over this issue. He knows better. 
Conrad also disputed the testimony of Sergeant Jim Peniston, who claimed to have touched an alien spacecraft. He said that he interviewed Peniston at the time, and he had not mentioned any such occurrence. Conrad also suggested that the entire incident might have been a hoax. A 1983 Omni article says the Colonel Ted Conrad the base commander, recalls five Air Force policemen spotted lights from what they thought was a small plane descending into the forest. Two of the men tracked the object on foot and came upon a large tripod-mounted craft. It had no windows but was studded with brilliant red and blue lights. Each time the men came within 50 yards of the ship, Conrad relates, it levitated six feet in the air and backed away. They followed it for almost an hour through the woods and across a field until it took off at the phenomenal speed. Acting on the reports made by his men, Colonel Conrad began a brief investigation of the incident in the morning. He went into the forest and located a triangular pattern ostensibly made by the tripod legs. He did interview two of the eyewitnesses and concludes, those lads saw something, but I don't know what it was. Suffolk police were called to the scene on the night of the initial sighting, and again the following morning, but found nothing unusual. On the night of the initial incident they reported that the only lights visible were from the Orford Lighthouse. They attributed the indentations in the ground to animals. The Suffolk Constabulary file on the case was released in 2005 under the UK's Freedom of Information Act and can be accessed on their website. It includes a letter dated 28 July 1999 written by Inspector Mike Topless who notes that one of the police constables who attended the scene on the first night returned to the site in daylight. In case he had missed something. There was nothing to be seen, and he remains unconvinced that the occurrence was genuine, wrote Topless. The immediate area was swept by powerful light beams from a landing beacon at RAF Ben Waters and the Orfordness Lighthouse. I know from personal experience that at night, in certain weather and cloud conditions, these beams were very pronounced and certainly caused strange visual effects. Evidence of a substantial mod file on the subject led to claims of a cover-up, some interpreted this as part of a larger pattern of information suppression concerning the true nature of unidentified flying objects, by both the United States and British governments. However, when the file was released in 2001 it turned out to consist mostly of internal correspondence and responses to inquiries from the public. The lack of any in-depth investigation in the publicly released documents is consistent with the MOD's earlier statement that they never took the case seriously. Included in the released files is an explanation given by Defence Minister Lord Trefgan as to why the MOD did not investigate further.